Anchors up, sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well, Jared. How are you doing? It's been a, it's been a, it's been a while. If whenever we take a singular week off, it feels like, well, it feels like two because it kind of is two. It is two technically. Kinda. It, it always feels, but it always feels like three. Is the point? All right, got it. It's a new tradition. It's a good tradition. Hold on, hold on. Oh, wait a minute. Couldn't get my fingers under. This one's on there tight. Okay, there we go. Kyle, I've broken. No, the tradition, good tradition. A I nail? have broken. I have broken a tradition, a however. No, a I've nail? broken it. I've broken. No, a tradition. <laughs> I, I bro- my nails are fine, but I broke a tradition. I always drink an Ohio beer on the podcast. We we have gone West Virginia on this one, however. Um, Kyle and I took a trip to West Virginia a couple weekends back. Hit up the local breweries. This one's a free folk. The Free Folk Brewery. Fayetteville, West Virginia. Good brewery. Yeah, it's yeah, very good. It is name. a great name. It is uh, a great great name. tap room, too. Like, just just outside Fayetteville, or I guess it's probably might still be in Fayetteville, but it's just outside like the town center, the main main street of, but yeah, um, we had fun and it's time, however, to uh, get right to the meat of the show. And Kyle, we're doing an Ask Sloopcast, que- uh, Ask Sloopcast episode where the users ask us questions. This is how you know I don't edit the podcast, because if I did, I would have edited out the part where I messed it up and then kept in the part where I tried again and got it right. Yes. Yes, you yeah. do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's 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 hop. Let's go right into it. It's at the. It's the main picture. It's the main graph that Jared created. Uh, when. Will should Ryan Day announce the starting quarterback for Ohio State? I would like to see I'd like to see it done before the season. I don't want to go into the season with two quarterbacks. Um I think we did it last year. I mean I know we did it last year. But I think it was kind of a farce because McCord always got more snaps and McCord always got uh the starting snaps. Uh, it, it always felt like a farce. It always kind of felt like they were maybe just trying to keep pushing McCord more than it was. Devin Brown had a realistic chance of being the number one quarterback. And in retrospect, it's very easy to say that we should have taken that as a warning mm-hmm. that they felt the need to keep pushing McCord. Uh I don't know, Kyle. What do you think? When when do you want to see it done? Uh, it's we, we we've seen it we've seen it all over the place here. We've seen it all over where they they were they announced it during spring camp. Seen it where it was the first week of fall camp, sure, and and even like the day of of the first game of the of the season. Me personally. I'd say, I'd say at the end of week one in fall camp, at the end of the first yeah, okay. week, the quarter quarterbacks, um, the main quarterback's been announced. Then you get then you get familiarity with the with the um, with the snap count. You get familiar with the cadence. That's that's the word I was looking for. Cadence of the quarterback and just feel the flow of everything. And you get accustomed and every everybody just everybody just. What what's the word I want to use? Um, familiarity. Yeah, get some familiarity, get some confidence in their guy. Um, you know that's your leader on the field. And yeah, I was I was getting ready to getting ready to disagree with you, Kyle. You said after week one, and I was about what? No, no, we got to do it before the season. And then you're like of spring ca- or of fall camp. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, I think I think that's a. I I, I agree. Like no no further. And I'm talking like Max no further than like the end of like halfway through camp. That that would be my take on it. Like 
if you hit the halfway point of camp and you don't have a quarterback yet, that's cause for concern. Yeah. Right, what, what, oh, I'm sorry. You, oh no, I, I was I was agreeing. Like they 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 got it. They got to name it here. This isn't this isn't one of those where you got two elite quarterbacks going at it. It's you got. This is just isn't that year. This just isn't that year. You, you got CJ Stroud's not coming through that door. You, yeah, you you got you got to name one sooner than later. There, it's just this is just that kind of year. I agree. Um, all right, Kyle. Next question. What do you got? All right. Um, what Ohio State record is most likely to be broken this year? What Ohio State is that? Is that another Esquire one, by the way? That is, yes. Buckeye Esquire, who is currently in the chat, say hi, Buckeye Esquire. Um, yeah, record most likely to be broken. I, man, I, I don't know. See, here's the thing. There's, I'm, a, I'm, a, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna like do like modern era because it's sometimes it's hard to compete with stats that were formed like mm -hmm. before Korea. Um, but I wonder if we could hit some sort of like, and total points is tough too, because there's so many more games now, but like points per game. I really think this defense is going to be that type of crazy. And it's going to have to be an average because, you know, Ohio State teams used to play like eight games or 10 games or whatever. So, again, it would have to be like points per game or maybe yards per game, something along those lines. But I, I, yeah. I, I seriously wonder if a stat like that is within reach. I don't know what that stat would be off the top of my head. I didn't I didn't prep for any of these questions and let going into these questions as blind as possible. Um, so yeah, just, I was, I was trying to give like a raw answer. So I didn't, like I said, if I had prepped it, I may have looked that up, but that's one of the first thing that pops into my head. Um, yeah, my, my, my first, my first thought was going to be, I, I don't know what the record is here, but maybe I think you were, you were alluding to it. Defensive points per game. I'm from maybe. points allowed. Yeah, points allowed per game. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and again, I think the I think the per game is a very important marker there, for reasons I already said. Um, I don't I don't see any big offensive numbers being set this year. You have running back splitting carries. You're gonna have a well rookie wide receiving records, or rather hmm. freshman wide receiver receiving records might be interesting interceptions per season as choir says man i know i'm hyping up the defense real hard right now but i'm just going to answer that the 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 first the first response popped into my head was i don't know how many opportunities they're going to get at interceptions like interceptions are such a anomaly that if you're playing really really good defense that you're almost like reducing your turnover statistics simply because oh, no. you aren't getting as many I, plays done against you. And especially if the offense yeah. is going to be as run heavy as I expect this year. Like, I feel like we're going to see a very ball can way more, way more so than any other Ryan day team. So far, we're going to see a very clock control possession control. Like it's going to be a, a very different Buckeye team. We're going to see this year. Who will be the run stop stud? I, I feel like we have a bunch of beasts right down the middle. Um, I think Cody Simon's right there. Here I think um, here, here's the record, Jared. Here yeah, is yeah. the easiest record. Put money down. Okay. Put money down on it. And um, who was it? It's you're, you're talking about like something about the freshman here. No Ohio State player. No Ohio State fresh true freshman wide receiver. Okay. Has more than 500 reception yards in a season. Ooh, that's breakable. 
the best was Chris Carter with 476. That's breakable. That's very breakable. 30, that's that's our answer. Here, here, 32 receptions, 476 yards, and seven touchdowns for Chris Carter his freshman year. I think Jeremiah Smith could can easily break two of those. Touchdowns are just weird. Touchdowns sometimes happen, yeah. sometimes don't yeah. happen. Who knows? Well, but the receptions the, and the, the yards. The, the amount of talent in that wide receiver room, it, it's it's going to be tough. Yeah. <laughs> Chop Daddy says over. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm taking over on two of those for sure. How about throwing a touchdown to that unit of a punter? Maybe. <laughs> Six, seven rugby player. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. You, listen, I, I try it in practice. I feel like we got plenty of good tight ends, but I'd, I'd try it in track. I try it in practice. All right, Kyle, what's our next question? We we settled on a good Jeremiah Smith answer on that one. Yeah. All right. What statistical category, not directly connected to points, will be the most detrimentive of the success of this season? So determinative, I assume. Um the my weak answer, my weak answer is third down conversion. I don't think that's a weak answer. Um I think that was that was, that was something Ohio State struggled at times last year. Yeah. Was was there was third down and you you got two studs of running backs in the backfield there. You got you still got an elite wide receiver core there. Like there's your 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 third down conversion needs to be so much higher. I'm going to, I'm going to look what their third down conversion was last year. You, you do was, that. I'm going to address something in the chat real quick. You guys are talking about the new Aussie punt or not the new Aussie. We were talking about the new Aussie punter. And now you're talking about a, uh, a transfer portal guy that came in. He's a preferred walk on. So yeah, take him. It doesn't, it doesn't go against the numbers. Take him. Uh, that's, that's always an easy take. That's that just is what that is. Well, how was better than I thought. They were 32nd in the nation at 42.9% third down conversion. Well, I think maybe what you're thinking about is like specifically short yardage. The, the short de- the short yardage that'd, that'd conversions hard, was bad for me to yeah you're, you're not going to find, find that but. quickly uh by any means just by googling it um to me and if i can't i'm trying not to go too obvious like as far as like a determinative stat goes um try I'm, that, you know, it, it would be too easy to be like yards per play or yards per play against. Um, here, here's one. Completion percentage. I think the defense is going to be great. I think we'll run the ball fine. How efficient is the passing game going to be, I think, is a huge deal. Um, I think another one you could po- probably do would be like plays for a loss, which would, you know, plays for a loss would help us determine, you know, would, would be pretty determinative of the quality of the offensive line, if that makes sense. So, you know, where do you place nationally? And I don't know. I don't know, like yards for, you know, or plays for a loss. I don't know, like a good number for that would be over the course of a season or even a game. I don't have that scale in my head, but you know, you know, be in the top third of that in college football this year. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to steal a popular Tom or stat median rush per game. Maybe. Um, 
See, here's the problem with that stat. That stat can be not self-determinative. Um, I'm not sure what the correct term there to use. A lot of times you see the stat of, oh, when so-and-so team runs the ball X number of times per game, their winning percentage is 750. But the problem with that stat is that when you're winning, you run the ball more to reduce the clock. So it, that's, you know, you have your chicken and your egg backwards on that a lot of the times. That's, that's my problem with the run the ball a lot means you win, you know, form of statistics. I think we struggled downfield. So uh, we'll be doing a lot of 20, uh, greater than 20 yard throws. I think I'm, I'm honestly not sure what the passing game is going to look like this year. Or because it's not going to be. It's not going to be like the typical Ryan Day passing game. Oh, less than 20. Gotcha. Um, I don't think it's going to be your typical Ryan Day passing game. What I'm not sure of is if they try to go like high percentage short yardage. And I think a lot of it will will be determined by how good the offensive line is, obviously, and how good the running game is. But I could almost see them going like old school football and be like pound rock, pound rock, pound rock, throw deep. Pound rock, pound rock, pound rock, pound rock, throw deep, like some old school football. Um, I, I think that's possible, but I also think it's possible they just go like hyper West Coast with it and shoot for percentage, you know, completion percentage, even if it's only, you know, four or five, six yards at a time. I I could see either. I don't have a I don't have a hard read on what the offense is, but I don't think you can run like the traditional Ryan Day offense this year. Unless one of these two quarterbacks surprise me again, neither of these guys are CJ Stroud or Justin Fields. Um, well, they don't have to be. Um, so not the average, but middle most rush, meaning uh, we're not booming. We're not boom bust rushing. Need to hit a consistent. Oh, I thought you meant like you said rush media median rush per game, not rush is I, I, I pluralized rush in when I said it. So I, I read that as rushes per game, which is a lot different than what you intended, which was median rush per game. That totally changes what what you said. Um, yeah, I think that's interesting because like where where is the medium? You know, it's, I think it's a good. Once again, you know, that Tom were great because sometimes an average can really be thrown off by a couple big runs, but the median will tell you what will better tell you what the overall vibe of the running game is for a game. Yep, exactly. All right, Kyle, I think it's time to move on to a new question. However, before we do that, let's uh, move on to a quick commercial break. If you're listening to this on the regular podcast feed, uh, you'll be hearing a quick commercial, but if you want to avoid those, uh, if you want to avoid those commercials, you can sign up at Patreon, patreon.thesloopcast.com. And there uh, for $3 a month or $32 a year, you can avoid these commercials, get premium access to the Discord server. Um, a lot of cool benefits available to you over uh, patreon.thesloopcast.com. Here's that commercial break now. Uh, Esquire says for popping off four yards per rush regularly play action will be indefensible with our wide receivers. Yeah, I, I agree, which is kind of what I was saying, like about the, you know, boom, boom, boom over top, you know, pound it, pound it, pound it, go over top. Like it's some old school NFL run the rock, throw in an occasional play action bomb down the field. Um, And I agree. I think that'd be incredibly hard to defend with with our right wide, wide receivers and it would give it a, you know, if, if our offensive line isn't great at pass blocking this year, and I don't know that they will be the play action will help to sort of suck in the defensive line, which could help out with the pass blocking a great deal. 
All right, Kyle, what question you got next? All right. Uh, when should when should Ryan Day announce a definitive starting offensive line? Uh, transfer portals closed. We aren't getting that tackle we were hoping for. No, no one went into the portal during the spring that Ohio State wanted. I mean, technically, uh, Proctor went back to Alabama, but he, uh, he everyone knew he was going to ban before he ever went into the portal. And of course, Ohio State would have taken him. But that was that was already determined. So that doesn't count. But it's not like Ohio State missed on the, you know, the big but And even if you include the original portal. There weren't. Outside of like a couple guys, there weren't that there weren't like there weren't offensive tackles in the portal to go get this this portal, these past two portal sessions. Um, so the offensive line, I think we know. I think we know who the starting five is. When should that be announced? I don't think it's as important as the quarterback. No, I, I don't either. But yeah, I think you do want the guys all practicing together. I think that's important. Yeah. But I, I think we already know who the starting offensive line is. Yeah. We And, right, and if you um, want to know who that is, we did a depth chart prediction show uh, just two episodes back. Maybe three episodes back, but recently you can go uh, see our yep. full thoughts in that episode. All right. Who is a player that no one is really talking about that you particularly like slash feel like they have a big role this year? Like slash who I think they have a big role this year. Kyle, do you have an answer right off the top of your head? I think I have one. Uh, that's that's tough because <laughs> cause I feel I feel I feel most people know most of the starters already, so it's hard yeah. it's hard to especially hard on the to, defense. Yeah, it's hard to pick. It's hard to pick somebody. I, I'm I, I got one. Go ahead. T C Caffey. Walk on running back. He's potentially the third the number three running back on the team right now um ohio state has some scholarships available i wouldn't be shocked if caffey gets I, in fact i kind of expect caffey to get one of those scholarships um like i said as as it looks right now he's probably the number three running back and if they go run hard then there's a real decent chance he gets a lot of play this year You know, I think I'm going to go out of left field here a little bit, Jared. That's the premise of the question, isn't it? <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with. Didn't uh, Will, get moved I'm, into I'm guard? Go, I'm going to go with Will. I'm going to go with Will uh, Kekamerik, the tight yeah. end. Yeah, I, I think so. And I think even with the time he'll get, he's he'll still be underappreciated because I think he'll be very interior. Or. Not interior, maybe interior, but he's going to be very block heavy. McClarty is the answer, fellas. I mean, maybe <laughs> the the giant. I know. I think we already have a discord uh, favorite player, Kyle. It's the uh, quote unquote freshman uh, from from Australia. The punter. What is he like? Six, six or something crazy like that. Um. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to look to see how tall he is, but yeah, he's he's ridiculous, ridiculously tall. Yeah, he's a he's a he's a big fella. Um, I he, he think he might already be one of our Discord server favorites. Um, uh, I think <laughs> another guy to keep an eye out on. <laughs> Chop says six seven two fifty five. It's a big boy. That sounds about right. Uh, and, and a lot of uh, I have another name, depending upon the health of the players um, in front of him and around him. Um, Inky Jones, kid from Steubenville, Ohio. Uh, and he's another walk on player at the safety role. 
uh, might be another guy who gets a surprising, even if it's special teams, um, might get a lot of field time this year who you aren't expecting. <laughs> uh, GDAM, I like I anyway, uh, GDAM power forward playing punter. The roster uh, kicks so much ass. Yeah. Big dude. Very big dude. All right. Ohio State. Ohio State is five scholarships under the limit. Where do the remaining scholarships go? So Ohio State did bring in some walk on players in the portal. We they they've not they did not add any scholarship players this portal session. I don't believe. Right. I'm not mistaken in that. Um, but they brought in several. Uh, preferred walk ons who come from. Like decent schools, right? Um, you know, Mac schools, like kids who walked away from scholarships to walk on at Ohio State. Um, you could certainly see some of them going there. Um, I already brought up Inky Jones at safety. Uh, I already brought up TC Caffey uh, at running back, I think, are, are two guys. Um, Patrick Gerd at tight end, maybe another guy who is going to be very blocking centric, maybe even more of a fullback than a tight end at times. I think those are three guys uh, who you who are currently walk ons on the team who who could get. Need to talk about Thurman. Surprise player. I think people I mean, the, the, the nerds among us know who Thurman is, I would say. He came in very highly recruited. The, 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 the casual fans might not know who Julian Thurman is yet. Um, I, I think. Him getting on the field is going to require him getting a bit of size and a bit of blocking. And he has, especially in this offense, which I think, again, will be more run focused than we've seen mm -hmm. Ryan Day offenses in the past. Um, yep. I don't know if a pass catching tight end. Is is a guy who's going to get on the field a ton at this point. Jelani, right, um, thank you, Jelani. Jelani, all right, uh, pick, all right. Who is the most underappreciated Buckeye since two thousand? Whoa, Kyle, we we only gave out three oh. scholarships. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought that I can't do math. <laughs> we need to give out two more. I, I gave out three. You got two more. <sighs> I don't offhand. I don't. I'm not prepared for this question. <laughs> That's fair. I will. Ex <laughs> Esquire wants one. Um, let's. I don't know, I'm just sort of going through a list here. Oh, Jaden Fleming or excuse me, Fielding. Mm, uh, yeah. Who was the place kicker last year? Still technically isn't under scholarship. I think that's such an obvious answer that it escaped both of us because we kind of just expect him to get a scholarship. Uh, he technically doesn't have one yet. Um, the, who would the fifth one go to is a, is a question. Uh, S or excuse me, uh, chop daddy in the chat said give Kobe to, Wilson. Give it to Herb streets boy. No. <laughs> we already gave one to a tight end. We did. We already gave one to a tight end. Um, David Adolph had one of the best spring games at wide receiver. He, he was almost like our spring game star. Just saying. Uh, we could give one to punter Joe McGuire. Who was give the one to St. Pers. I know you mentioned a kicker already, but the um, senior kicker out of uh, Groveport, Ohio. Austin Snyder. Sure. 
sure. <laughs> All right, there's there's the five. I'm not touching right, that most, question. Uh, uh, who's Aspire. the most underappreciated Buckeye since 2000? It's, that's a lot of guys. Um, I think Evan Spencer deserves a, deserves a shout out there. Um, a, a lot. You know, when we talk about like the Ohio State playoff run, you know, we rightfully bring up Zeke Elliott and we rightfully bring up that offensive line and we rightfully bring up Cardell Jones. Evan Spencer played a huge role in that in that three game stretch, counting the Big Ten title game and into the, you know, he 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 made a double block on one of Zeke's big runs against Alabama. Um, he threw a touchdown pass. Uh, I, I don't know that Evan Spencer's name is brought up enough when discussing that team. And everything that they did. Quite frankly. You know, you're going to you're going to maybe like me for this pick, Jared. OK, I'm, I'm going with the I'm going with a slob here. More specifically, more specifically, a center. Corey Lindsley. Yeah, I think that's a good answer. Um. I mean, the offensive line in general, you know, tends to get overlooked. Um, I mean, again, if you think about how terrible they looked at Virginia Tech versus how dominant they looked during that three game stretch, like. That entire that entire unit deserves like the most improved award. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, Um, and like all time (laughs) and not just of the season, but like of all time um they 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 showed tremendous growth uh you have, you have an answer Kyle most underappreciated buckeye of the past 20 plus years i did say yes you did yes 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 you did <laughs> should, should should we should we broaden the scope away from just the national title game um <sighs> I think we brought up several guys who I felt like were underappreciated during our all day team, which was our previous episode. I I love Kenny Guyton, um, but oh, like he didn't play that much, if we're being honest. Um, when he did, it was vitally important um, for sure. Yeah. Uh, I, I often wonder where, where like Terrell Pryor belongs in this conversation because mm. he was special on the field. But what happened off the field is, of course, noted. Um, so, like, it's a complicated legacy, let's say. Um, I think JT Barrett also has kind of a complicated legacy. He holds all these records, but I don't think people there's there's definitely a mixed there's definitely a mixed overall feeling about JT Barrett's legacy at Ohio State I would say 15 seasons though exactly you know you know I may I may be wrong here but you, you talk about whenever you talk about Ohio State wide receivers you you think about the Elite players, Michael Michael Thomas, uh, Wilson, and Marvin Harrison Jr. But one one name who has his name in, in the record books in in a lot of places that doesn't get a lot of recognition to a lot a lot of the elite wide receivers or how Ohio State has had in the last 10, 15 years here. Yeah, KJ Hill. Yeah, I I agree. I. I don't think KJ Hill gets enough love for what he did at Ohio State. All right. Pick five players to represent the different regions for the NCAA 25 cover. So the rumor, so we got it like a, some sort of deluxe edition cover, which had Donovan Edwards, but also like a bunch of players on it. And there's been rumor that the standard edition NCAA game will have multiple regional covers. And I, I picked the number five 
out of, out of a hat. Like I just, I just made that up. Um, so uh, five players from five different areas, um, chat, feel free to play along with this one. Um, I, I think with Donovan Edwards being on the cover of the Lux edition, like he's the, he's the front and center guy there. Does that make him more or less likely to like represent the Midwest region? Or is like, no, no, no. He got the deluxe edition. We'll give it to. I think it's less likely. I think it's less likely. I tend to agree. I think they'll spread it around. I would say the problem is if like you're like, oh, we definitely need to get an Ohio State guy on the cover just because money, right? Like putting an Ohio State guy on the cover money. Um, If you're on a deluxe you shouldn't be on original. If you're, I would say, especially if you're front and center on the deluxe. Um, I'd say part of the problem with putting Ohio State player on the cover right now is that from a national perspective, who is that guy? Because like as Ohio State so, fans, we'd be like, oh, Jack Sawyer, uh, Caleb Downs. You know, we have a lot of ideas of who it should be, but you have to keep in mind that for the most part being on the cover is kind of like getting the Heisman. It's mostly going to be quarterbacks. I I think, yeah, I think there's three, I think there's three off the top of my head that are really obvious in my mind. Uh, Quinn yours, you go over to Texas area. Uh, I think the Southeast uh, Carson Beck. I think so. Yeah. And uh, Dylan Gabriel. Out, out in the West. Yeah, I, I will say both Beck and Ewers are not front and center like Donovan Edwards, but they're mm-hmm. both on the on the deluxe edition cover. Um, So is the deluxe edition cover a preview for what the. <sighs> Sanders probably will be on it as unjustified as that is. Um, marketing. Yeah. It'll, it'll push units. It'll push units. Um, I, I saw, I saw someone recently call Dion Sanders, the Lamar ball of college football, and I haven't been able to get it out of my head ever since. <laughs> Luther burden, I think is a good option. Actually. Uh, the problem is, is that it's Missouri and Missouri doesn't push units. I think he's deserving. I think he's a fantastic player. I don't think that they're going to be leaping to put a Missouri player on the cover. No. And and that's why I was going with high profile. Right. Um, 100%. Teams. Carson Beck, Quinn Ewers. And I think that hurts Ohio State. They don't have like a quarterback right now. They don't have a singular. Run. Like you, if we'd done you, this you know last should, year, it would have been Marvin Harrison. 100%. You, you know who sh- you know who should be because of like he got a lot of uh, great publicity because of how hardworking he was and like just a hard nosed football kind of guy and is now transferring to a high level, a high, high blue, blue chip um, red team. Blue chip. Well, they're gotcha. gold. Uh, <laughs> We, we've had this. We've had this Riley, discussion Riley, before. Riley blue Leonard. chip and blue blood yeah. is, is a basketball terminology because all the good teams in basketball are blue, but all the good teams in football are red. Riley Leonard. Yeah. I'm not going to put Travis Hunter on the cover. So, so th- those would be. They, four. They'd rather put Sanders on there because he has the name Sanders and he's a quarterback. Again, so the cover is like, for the most part, it's it's going to be like the Heisman, where it's going to be a quarterback or running back or a wide receiver almost all the time. So, so those, those are my four. I would have to find a fifth one. So I have Beck, Ewers, um, Gabriel, and um, and Leonard. I'd have to find a fifth one somewhere. Yeah, unfortunately, it's probably Donovan Edwards. It's yeah. just hard yeah. not it's, to it's pick hard all not quarterbacks. Picking yeah. All quarterbacks, yes. But that's because you're thinking like a marketing person. Because I mean, let's go back and look at all the Madden covers. I mean, let's not actually do that, but just like do it in your head for a second. 
it's mostly quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. How many how many defensive players have we seen on the cover of Madden? Ray Lewis, because what an anomaly he was. Troy Polamalu shared one with a wide receiver. But he shared it with a wide receiver. Only three. Oh, who's the third one? Ray Lewis. Who, who was the second one you said? Troy Polamalu shared it. Yeah. Yep. He shared he shared with Fitzpatrick. Yes. Or Fitzpatrick. <laughs> Fitzgerald. <laughs> yes. Um, Richard Sherman. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Richard Sherman was super marketable, though. He was. So I'm just saying, well, like, of three, course, all there's three of those guys were <laughs> right. Troy Polamalu is still doing commercials. He's been retired for a while now. Got, got the Legion of Boom was marketable. Yeah, they won the Super hair. Bowl. Yeah, absolutely. You know what? Denzel Burke on the cover gave it to me. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like us as like Ohio State fans and Ohio State nerds. We could, I think, you know, Jack Sawyer or Denzel Burke or Caleb Downs, but just like Ohio State doesn't have like a highly marketable offensive player to stick on the cover this year. Yeah. I mean, let, pick, pick a fifth one. Who, who who would you think should be the fifth one? I mean, we're lacking if, if we're saying it's not Donovan Edwards because he's front and center. On the. We're, we're, so if, on we're doing, the if we're doing region. If we're doing regionals, we're missing a east. We're missing east coast. Well, and that's where that's where Riley Leonard comes in. He's a Notre Dame quarterback. That's marketable. That's your Midwest and your east. We have a west coast. We have a south central. It's Aller. Is it? Let's let's let's. You know, let's let's do the he had he had a great he had a great uh, show out out west moving out east. Let's let's just make it Ward. Quarterback down in Miami. Transfer uh, to Miami. I don't think so. I, I think I think Riley Leonard is probably that guy. He's the quarterback at Notre Dame. He has enough hype around him. OK. If right, not, uh, if next... not, it would be Donovan Edwards. If not, it would probably be Drew Aller. But I don't know who. I love Drew Aller and his struggles so far. I put squarely on the coaching staff at Penn State, just so we're clear. Um, I would have loved to have seen him with a good coaching staff that knows how to develop a quarterback. Unfortunately, he went to Penn State. All right. Uh, next question. After this ad break, we're going to take a quick break and uh, get back to our final questions. So here are some ads. And we're back. Kyle, oh, what question? Uh, what questions we still got? If you could add any coach in America to this staff, who would it be? I have an immediate answer to that. Mm hmm. Now, hold on. Does it have to be does it have to be from college? Because I might not have does not specify. OK, what do you say? Esquire Esquire is typing here. He's, let's say yes. We're going to exclude Nick Saban. Um, Scott Huff. Scott Huff was the offensive line coach for Washington the last few years. Um, he followed the rest of the coaching staff to Alabama, but then a couple months later took a job with the Seahawks. But I think he's one of the best offensive line coaches uh, that have, that has been in college football the past few years. Uh, so that's who I want. Um, Scott Huff, who I believe is in Seattle. I know he was at Alabama for a few months and went to the NFL. I think it was Seattle. That would be my guy. Austin, was that your guy too? I would want Kyle yeah, Flood. I was I, I was thinking Flood. Hmm. Flood was my was my first one. I was thinking as well. Either Flood or 
I mean, he, he's done really well. Maybe um, who, who did you say, Jared, was yours? Uh, Scott Huff, who was the either, offensive either, line coach at Washington yeah, the past either, few years. OK, either either Flood or even Joe Moore. I think I think Moore's had some really good offensive line going into the NFL. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think Kyle Flood's also a good answer. Um, I think you're bringing in another offensive coordinator, though. I, I think is maybe a problem. Bringing in like a third slash fourth. I would take Sharon Moore as the O-line coach. Um, because he's gonna get fucked out of the the scrum job. Yeah, I think so too. Um, he's being set up to fail in in Michigan right now. He's he's he is the Michigan fall guy right now. Um, but I'm I'm gonna stick with my answer. I like my right. answer. I don't I don't I don't want to bring like an offensive coordinator in because I feel like that might complicate things. So I'm gonna stick with Scott Huff. All right, I'm gonna post this in the in the chat here. Per Vegas, the following teams are likely are most likely to win the national title this season. Per Vegas, which of these teams will have the worst season? Okay, so Georgia's at three hundred, Ohio State four fifty, Texas seven fifty, Oregon at eight fifty, then Alabama, LSU, and Ole Miss in the thousands, Penn State, Michigan, Notre Dame. Florida State in the 2000s, and then Clemson and Tennessee, 3,000. I, Kyle, back in February, I believe it was in February, we did a Know Your Enemy offseason edition for Michigan. We both had Michigan going, what, 500? I mean, yeah, then that, that would be Michigan here then. I also do not get... The constant hype around Tennessee. Uh, I also don't think Clemson is. I, I. The 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 moment that was Clemson is over. I'm sorry. The 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 Clemson moment has come and passed. Uh, Dabo had a great run of quarterbacks. That has not replicated itself. He lost. He had two amazing coordinators. And he's yet to replace them it is. He refuses to use the transfer portal. I saw a crazy stat. Kyle, there are. I'm going to try and do this off the top of my head. I don't have the stat in front of me. There were four teams who did not bring in. A transfer portal player. In the year 2024. All right. Name those four teams. I already gave you one of them. Michigan. No. <laughs> Clemson. Yes, Clemson. Who are the other three? God, I, I, I don't know. It's very um, obvious. It's very obvious if you think about it. And the, the, all three of those teams share a very important thing in common. Florida State? No. Florida State brought in a bunch of transfer players who yeah, brought in I, I thought no so. transfer players. I thought so. It's, it's super obvious if you if if you think about it. Yeah, Colorado. <laughs> it's Colorado. <laughs> uh, Esquire. Esquire got it. The service academies. Ah. Yep. Army, yes. Navy and Air yes. Force. They're not allowed to. Well, also, if if. The player, if a player did transfer there, they are a part of the military now. Like they have, <laughs> it's as you're not just going there to play football. It's, it's, it's a little bit more of a commitment than is, uh, is allotted. Um, yeah. look at, so looking at these odds, I think Florida State Clemson is fine where they're at. I think they, I don't I don't think that they have the teams this year to to win it all. So I think them being having that kind of 
rating for per Vegas, I think well, is fine. If you look at our Ask Sloopcast questions, uh, Duncan followed that up, followed that question up with a pretty decent question where he essentially says, well, just like who's going to be the worst or who's going to fail the most based off of expectations. So like there's, there's two answers. Who's going to be the worst team and who's going to miss expectations the most. So I think those are two questions Two or, you know, you're going to get two separate answers out of that. Um, if we if we weight this based off of where they're sitting, I really have to wonder how good Alabama is going to be, because, again, for going by Vegas, one, two, three, four, fifth. Compared to, say, Michigan, who is, you know, ninth slash tenth. They're out of schedule conference. Is some of at Wisconsin the same word is, but in a different order? Sure. Is at Wisconsin? Are we talking about Bama? Yeah. So so uh, let's just do this. Wait, they're, what? They're, what week is that? Three week, week three. They go to Wisconsin. Yep. It's not like it's not like they're going to play an out of conference in November. Obviously, <laughs> but I was just thinking if that was like week one, week one with a brand new coach. Like that's that makes that game hyper losable. And even in week three, well, I mean, it's I mean, still here, somewhat here, losable. Thing, like, but if it was West, week one, it makes it hyper losable. They play Western Kentucky and then South Florida. They're, they're not going to be tested. And then having to go on the road. And, and Jared, Jared um, uh, jokingly Having, t- jokingly talked about this word, <laughs> saying that Alabama will never come up north. <laughs> and they never did. I said, and he did. He at no point did Nick Saban both schedule and play a game in the north. He did play a game at Penn State, but it was scheduled before he got there. And he was technically around when this Wisconsin game was scheduled, but he he obviously never made the trip. Nick Saban (laughs) never played a regular season game above the Mason Dixon line. Bama schedule is kind of easy. It says at Wisconsin, Georgia, at Tennessee, at LSU, at Oklahoma and Auburn. It, I think it might be pretty tough for them. I mean, Alabama, I wouldn't say it has the worst season. I, I, my, my, my odds are still on Michigan. Right, but again, if we're weighting it based off of expectations, where, again, Bama is fifth per Vegas. I still think, I still think Michigan has the worst season. Don't get me wrong. Out of all those teams, I think Michigan has the worst season. But if we're weighting it based off of like Bama being fifth and Michigan being ninth, tenth, you know, is that worth like an extra game in in the layout? Because if again, if we look at the Bama schedule, Wisconsin's losable, Georgia's losable. I don't think Tennessee is, but Missouri very well could be LSU could be. Oklahoma could be, but I, again, I'm saying could be like, What's, I don't think they lose all of those that they won't lose all of those. Uh, I'm seeing nine and three, both uh, Esquire and, and Austin saying in the chat, I think nine and three regular season is very, you're talking about Michigan. No, nah, Michigan's not going nine and three. Michigan is not going nine and three. No chance. Michigan will fall much harder than that. Kyle, can you put the Michigan schedule in the chat? Let's end the episode yeah. on this question. Ain't no way. Oh, no, I was, I was, no, I was going, I was, I'm going to pull it up real quick here. Um, but what about LSU? What, what, what has, what's LSU? Um, what did LSU lose? And can they, with the recruiting, 
can they make can they make up for the difference of what they've lost? Because we've seen in LSU where they have a really good year and then it sure. drops and it comes back. I will point out that I believe down. you did in our way too early predictions. And, and again, you were. You were it was supposed to be like an outside. It was supposed to be like a wild prediction, right? So it, it, granted, yes. it was supposed to be a wild condition when you said this. So I'm not like 100 percent holding you to this. But you did say LSU wins the SCC. Now, again, again, that was meant to be a wild prediction and not like a true prediction. But you did say that. Yeah. All right. Here is well, because I saw their schedule. They they play at USC. Alabama but, and uh, Oklahoma. This year. But either way, here's here is um, here's uh, Michigan's schedule. Yeah. So Texas, they lose USC. I think they lose. Washington, I think, is an easy loss. Oregon, I think, is an easy loss. Ohio State, I think, is an easy loss. Washington may not be easy. Uh, It's at Washington. I I shouldn't have said easy. Washington did lose a lot, but so did Michigan. I invite everyone to go back and listen to our Know Your Enemy offseason edition for Michigan. It's gotten worse since then. They've lost way more pieces than they have gained since we recorded that episode. They have a good defense as long as everybody stays healthy. But their offense outside of Loveland and Edwards is a train wreck. And I include the offensive line in that, which has been the backbone. What made Michigan great the past two years outside of cheating was their offensive line. They, they're they out of offensive linemen. They are out of wide receivers. They're paper thin on defense. They have a really good starting 11 guys on defense. But they they have nothing behind those guys. But can they go toe to toe going into the fourth quarter with Texas? No. With just their with just their starting defense and not being able to rotate in. That, and that's players. and that's a huge part of it. You're going to be you know, an early test in a, you know, you're not fully in game speed yet because it's your first real game. You're not really game conditioned yet. It's still going to be hot potentially on September 7th. I think they're going to get walloped by Texas. I think Texas is going to obliterate Michigan. I hope so. Texas goes up to Ann Arbor and just wails on them. Um, is it at Ann Arbor? Um, actually, let me let me double check. I I, I thought it was neutral. Am I wrong? No, nope. it, it is Ann Arbor. It is in Ann Arbor. Thank God. That's such a nice. I just it's Ooh, isn't sad early, when I see a week early, two game against early odds. Early odds, Jared. Guess yeah. what the line is? Uh, Texas minus six and a half. Three and a half. I'd take it. Take it. Hey, Austin, same brain, man. Same brain. We know this already. Well, here's the thing. Three and a half would be the number if it were a neutral site. But it's it's not. Yeah. Um, down, about to reload DraftKings. Hey man, <laughs> you've seen you've seen my you've seen my uh, sloot picks numbers. Don't be taking in my advice on anything. Over over under forty nine and a half. They're expecting a low score. Um, I'll be honest with you, and I'm not saying that they will. 
Austin is literally about to say Texas will score 42 on their own. Yeah. All right, Kyle, that's that's the end of the episode. <laughs> Smash <laughs> indeed. Um, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Oh, gosh, honestly, I haven't really looked. Uh, <laughs> just because it's been a pretty hectic couple of weekends here, I haven't actually looked at too much of what else was going on that I can talk about in um, in Kyle's corner. So, um, yeah, I I don't have much. We are we are over the hour mark. Yeah. Right we, now. We, so can I mean, we can I mean, end just, it. Yeah, I mean, oh, how about this? How about this? Just because we like to, we like to always, um, have a in your face moment to uh, to Ann Arbor here. Uh, Jesse Owens going to receive a plaque in Ann Arbor. I mean, to co- to commemorate uh, Day of Days performance during the. 1935 Big Ten Championships. Just to be clear, he isn't receiving it. Well, yeah. Yes, but there's a plaque in, in oh, honor of him. There's, there's going to be hanging his, his in, estate. Hanging his estate will be receiving it. There. Yes, when, when is that? Um, the CONCACAF... Um, We're talking about crew now for the people who aren't uh, soccer folk. Yes. When, when, when is that? When is the, the championship? Uh, the cook a calf, not the gold cup. Um, uh, he, where I know. Come on. Lot, dead lot dead air here. June dead 1st. Air June 1st, June 1st. A lot of time, a lot of time still. Kyle reporting the ghost of Jesse Owens will be descending on Ann Arbor. Bucks by a billion come November. (laughs) Yeah. Indeed. That, I mean, listen, it would take a lot to get me to go to Ann Arbor, uh, but that would do it. (laughs) I'd. I would bear witness to that. I I would, in fact, bear witness to that. All right. Um, Kyle, anything else? No, let's let's go ahead and end it. Listen. A full a full eclipse. The Aurora Borealis. Jesse Owens descending on Ann Arbor from above. I don't know if that's the, the end times or the beginning times, but it's something. 2024 is the year of the Ohio. Ah, yes. Yes, yes, yes. All right, Kyle, that's the end of the show. Uh, tonight's ending music brought to you by a a band called Paper Morning. Uh, I think they're, they're from Ohio. I forget where. Um, whenever I forget, I just always say Columbus. I should probably just say I don't remember. But it might be Columbus. But the name of this band is Paper Morning. So with that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Paper Morning.